Let us continue with our discussion of non-Bendelian inheritance patterns. I am Professor Hudson and you are about to view narrated PowerPoint lectures for Module 7, Part 2. We are still on Section 11.5 which deals with inheritance patterns that do not follow Mendelian rules of inheritance. In the previous segment, we talked about incomplete dominance, multiple alleles, codominance, and also we talked about polygenic inheritance. Now let's talk about something called pleiotropy. Some alleles have a characteristic that may affect multiple things in an organism. Some alleles of a characteristic may have multiple phenotypic effects, influencing a number of genes, loci, often non-related. In this example, we have nude mice. Nude mice have a mutation in one gene that causes them to be hairless, lack of thymus, have no immune system, and no mammary glands. This single mutation in this one allele affects a wide range of things in these mice's body that are not apparently related. Another example of pleiotropia is seen with Marfan syndrome. Marfan syndrome is a genetic disorder of the connective tissue. People with Marfan tend to be unusually tall with long limbs and long thin fingers. The syndrome is carried by the gene FBN1, which encodes the connective protein fibrillin. Marfan syndrome is a dominant genetic trait, meaning that people who inherit only one copy of the Marfan gene from either parent will develop Marfan syndrome, and they will be able to transmit it to their children. Marfan syndrome has a wide range of expressions from mild to severe. The most serious complications are defects of the heart valves, aorta, lungs, eyes, spinal cord, and heart palate. The mutation also can affect heart valves and weaken the aorta. Marfan syndrome is another example of where a single mutation or a mutation in a single allele affects a wide range of things in an organism's body. Marfan syndrome is also autosomal dominant, which we talked about previously. When a trait is autosomal dominant, you only need one mutant copy to have the disorder. Environmental influence. The environment influences the expressions of genes. The environment in which an organism lives can profoundly affect the phenotype that's expressed. For example, you may have a lot of genes for being tall. However, your environment can affect how tall you end up being. If you live in an environment where you're not getting, getting sufficient nutrition, you may end up being short even though you had genes for being tall. And the environment can influence how genes are expressed. In this example, newborn Siamese cats can demonstrate how environmental influence plays a role in a phenotype. A Siamese cat has the genotype for dark fur all over its body. However, the enzyme that produces the dark fur or the dark pigment for dark fur is inactive at temperatures above 93 degrees Fahrenheit. When kittens are in the all-encompassing warmth of the mother's uterus, the enzyme is inactive and they are born with pale fur everywhere on their bodies. However, since the gene for this dark color, the dark color is sensitive to temperature, when they're born, the ears, nose, paws, and tail will now turn dark because they are exposed to cooler temperatures outside of the womb. The rest of the body will be will have a color that's related to those temperatures in that region of the body.
incomplete penetrance. Uh, this is another example of something that didn't follow Mendel's rules. In incomplete penetrance, in some instances, a dominant allele may not be expressed in a heterozygote individual. An example of this is polydactyl. Polydactyl means having extra fingers. This is an autosomal dominant trait. Affected individuals have additional fingers and or toes. A single copy of the polydactyl allele is usually sufficient to cause this condition. However, in some cases, the individual can carry the dominant allele but does not exhibit the trait. The term indicates that a dominant allele does not always penetrate into the phenotype of the individual. Uh, on the left side of the slide, you have an, uh, what appears to be an African American or someone of African descent with an extra pinky finger. This is quite common among African Americans, and typically, when an infant is born with this extra digit in this position, the doctor will tie it off with a string, which will prevent it from receiving blood and oxygen, and then the extra digit will fall off. If there's a bone in the extra digit, it typically won't fall off on its own and will have to be removed with surgery. In contrast, the individual on the right, which appears to be someone of Caucasian or Anglo-Saxon descent, has an extra digit. And it appears to be a full-on extra digit, unlike the picture on the left. This one may or may not be an example of the autosomal dominant incomplete penetrance or polydactyl. The picture on the right, this individual could have an another condition that also causes extra fingers. When we talk about incomplete penetrance with the autosomal dominant form of polydactyl, we are usually talking about the situation on the left side of this slide. Now let's take a look at how genes located on the same chromosome are inherited. Genes on the same chromosome tend to be inherited together. Mendel's law of independent assortment works only for genes whose loci are on different pairs of homologous chromosomes. Alleles that are on the same chromosome do not line up independently of one another on the metaphase plate and are not separated at anaphase 1. Genes on the same chromosome tend to be inherited together and this phenomenon is called a linkage group. An example of genetic linkage is flower color and pollen and sweet peas. The genes for flower color and pollen shape are linked, that is, they are located on the same chromosome very close to each other. This slide is just showing two chromosomes that have duplicated uh, during interphase and now about to undergo prophase one of meiosis one. The colors, the colored regions on these chromosomes represent the genes. Although linked genes tend to be inherited together, they don't always stay together. Crossing over between homologous chromosomes can sometimes give you new combination. Crossing over during prophase 1 of meiosis 1 involves the exchange of DNA between chromatids of paired homologous chromosomes in synapses. The further apart two linked gene loci are on a chromosome, the more likely crossing over is to occur between them. Crossing over occurs so often between loci far apart on a chromosome that they appear to be assorting independently even though they were on the same chromosome. This genetic recombination and independent assortment as we've mentioned previously can give you new gene combinations. This slide is showing a pair of homologous chromosomes that have undergone genetic recombination through crossing over among the genes that were far apart on the chromosome. Crossing over can create new combinations of linked alleles and they appear to assort randomly 
because roughly as many gametes are produced with the genes exchanged by crossing over as are produced in the original conformation. This slide is showing hypothetically at the end of meiosis when we have separated the homologous chromosomes and the chromatids how you can get these various gene combinations through the crossing over. And so you'll have some chromosomes that look just like the original ones and then you'll have some chromosomes with new linked gene combinations. The new linked gene combination versions of the chromosomes are the two chromosomes in the middle of this fi figure. Now let's talk about how sex and sex linked and sex influenced traits are inherited. First let's talk about what makes people male or female first. Animals have a set of sex chromosomes that dictate gender. In mammals, females have two X chromosomes. In mammals, males have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. The Y chromosome is much smaller than the X chromosome. A small section of the X and Y chromosome is homologous, allowing them to pair in prophase 1 and segregate during meiosis. The rest of the chromosomes in this pair the rest of the genes on these chromosomes in this pair do not match up. These two chromosomes are called the sex chromosomes and the rest of the chromosomes that you have are called your autosomes. In terms of inheritance, Every infant that's born has a 50% chance of being female and a 50% chance of being male. Dad produces sperm during meiosis that have either the X chromosome or the Y chromosome, whereas mom produces eggs during meiosis that all have the X chromosome. So ultimately, dad determines the sex of the baby. If an X sperm from dad fertilizes mom's egg, it will X egg, it will be a girl. And if a Y sperm from dad fertilizes one of mom's X eggs, it will be a boy. In mammals, the sex of an offspring is determined by the sex chromosome in the sperm. For organisms in which males are XY and females are XX, the sex chromosome carried by the sperm determines the sex of the offspring. When we talk about sex linked genes, we're talking about genes that are found only on the X or only on the Y chromosome. Genes carried on one sex chromosome but not the other are called sex linked. In humans, the X chromosome is much larger than the Y and carries over a thousand genes. In contrast, the Y chromosome is smaller and only has 78 genes. It is the SRY gene on the Y chromosome that determines male sex characteristics. The X and Y chromosomes have very few genes in common. Females can be XX and males can be XY because females have two X chromosomes, recessive sex linked genes on an X chromosome may or may not be expressed. With males with only one X chromosome, they have no second copy to mass recessive genes. They fully express all the X linked genes that they have, whether they are dominant or recessive, normal or mutant. This figure shows a Punnett square involving an X-linked recessive allele such as color blindness. We'll discuss this in the next segment.